violence, all aggravated, kind of agitated children. This was very different in Umfravox, where people were actually enslaved. Now, there's one thing for me to have so, to lose you, and I grieve you because you're gone for me, right? You're kidnapped or you're taken away. But there's a different thing when you yourself are tortured here in this country. There are people who experience you being tortured, and they themselves are tortured and traumatized. And that becomes a legacy quite different in terms of coping, in terms of understanding. There is an injury there, certainly, but it's different. And I, and I believe that there is uh, part of the reason why the ceremony when people go to Ghana, you have Africans and African Americans coming together, and they talk about healing both groups of people forgiving, loving, re-embracing, mm -hmm. trying to find justice. All of those things are the discussions that are now being had. Um, if, a different injury. Is, different injury. If, if it is healthy to examine post-traumatic slave syndrome here, why not a version of that on the other side of the Atlantic where it all started? And I, and I believe that's happening, but it just doesn't look the same. It's not the same thing. And I think part of what Africa is struggling for Africa is struggling for the very same things that you just talked about. Africa is struggling to maintain itself, to maintain the integrity, because of all of the outside um, uh, infection, if you will, that has gone into Africa. So when you start looking at the people themselves, very, very different notion, great deal of pride, great deal of sense of this is ours, very different than here, where we are like, who am I? You know, I'm not even African, right? So you have a very, uh, yeah, a, a trauma, but a trauma related to something very different. But as I said before, no African controls the economy exactly. in, of their country. Exactly. It's not, and if you look at, at African, and I tell people this all the time in terms of Africa, Africa has its own set of foibles, its own set of problems, but Africans are becoming very, very aware of the fact that they are losing control and they're losing their sense of solidarity. And so there is a discussion going on now in terms of African com countries coming together, which is what Nkrumah was trying to do, mm -hmm. right? And you saw what happened when Nkrumah did that. Right? That you had all of these outside sources, including the United States, who said, oh, no, no, we don't want you African countries coming together. We want you to remain tribes. We want you to remain fighting. Same thing, middle, upper, lower class, as it relates to Africa. We don't want those African people coming together. And we, Africa, has its own issue around those kinds of things, around its own tribalism, around its own um, uh, nationalism, if you will, where folks are not realizing that unless Africa comes together, like what, which is what Europe did, <laughs> by the way, when the wall came down, that was about solid, solidarity for Europe. And that is what Africans are going to have to know and understand and move forward. Hence, the trauma being one where they aren't realizing the motivation of those who are coming in, at least not the average person. But there are plenty that are looking right now, including African Americans, by the way, that are now trying to get engaged in that, and the United Nations. In closing, we see increasingly that uh, greed has grown and continues to grow. And um, it's impacting especially our communities and our people. What do you think is coming down the pike? Do you think it's going to resolve itself? Do you think it's going to get worse? <laughs> worse, sir. Or do you think uh, that uh, there's a solution that's on the way? Are this you is, encouraged in any way? This is what I believe. I think that the immediate future is quite dark and that the distant Careful. future. Distant future. You said quite dark? <laughs> quite dark. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it is going to be quite dark, just by attrition. Yeah, majority of the world's a world of color. People in the future are going to be brown, let's be clear. The other part about it, though, is that it's going to be very bleak for a while. I think things are going to crumble, and they're going to have to crumble, because we cannot uh, build a new edifice upon an old and crumbling one. This one has to go. What do you say to young people who are watching this? What do you tell them? Uh, how to protect yourself for what's coming? I tell them that one, never forget, never forget the shoulders you stand on. Never forget the strengths that got you where you are and understand that you are our best and greatest hope for the future. Do you see the struggle in curriculum continuing without any, <laughs> any real fist fight? 
Uh, yeah, I think it's going. they're going to continue to mutate and have a mess there. We have to make it our business to educate our children. Our edu educational institutions are not. How do you feel in closing, and we have about 30 seconds, and I mean it. <laughs> How do you feel about the, the mileage that you've accumulated? How do you feel about that? Is it a source of pride? Is it a source of frustration? Or are you looking forward to the future, or what? It is a source of hope. On that note, you've given us a lot of food for thought and inspiration, too. Dr. Joy, thanks You're for welcome. coming back. I'll be back. Thanks for being with us on another edition of Like It Is. I hope that you found my guest nutritious. Share your thoughts of what you've seen. Let us know what you think about this week's Like It Is with Gil Noble. Log on to www.likeitis.7online.com.